What's up, guys? Teddy Cornwell here. Welcome to the Underdog Talk. And there is just something about the Underdog. But I mean, we have an absolute beast on the Underdog Talk. The Jim Shark and Apollo, an athlete himself, Mr. Luke Ellsman. What's up, big fella? How you doing, man? Doing great. Feeling great. Happy to be here. Hey, happy to have you. We're feeling great as well. And honestly, I want to jump right into the bat and, and get, get the big topic. I mean, why fitness, Luke? Obviously, and more importantly, why decide to be a fitness influencer? Right. So it all started from, uh, it just all started from just being someone that grew up uh, around the gym. You know, it all started at a young age. My dad was always in the lifting. So that got me into it at an early age. And then, I mean, I would just do it because he was doing it uh, at, when it was really young. And then it got to the point where I was like, oh, I'm super, I'm super interested. And I was like 16, still in high school um, and just lifting with some friends, going to retro, lifting at home sometimes because we had like a home gym set up. And by the time I moved from New Jersey, I moved from New Jersey to South Carolina for a little bit right after high school. Like it was like a parent's move. You know, I moved with my parents because I couldn't. I didn't have a job. I, I didn't, I didn't have any money. So I couldn't just like stay in New Jersey. So I, you know, I left with my parents, uh, moved to South Carolina. And that's when I originally picked up a camera for the first time. I got a G7X, started just recording videos um, in my garage gym. So we had a garage gym uh, that my dad built because he was a lifter. And then he loved the fact that I liked to lift. And so did my younger brother. So he's like, oh, I'll just make a garage gym, whatever. And well, he already had one. So a lot of the stuff just transferred over. And then that's where I just started filming my YouTube. And that was back in like 2017, you know? So I go way back and it was just workout. It was just workout videos, workout motivation, back day motivation, like very basic, just edits. I throw up on YouTube. I learned how to use Final Cut Pro, that kind of deal. It's all started from there. I just, I loved watching YouTube videos of like Cali Muscle, uh, Rich Piana. I loved like the OGs. I loved Christian Guzman when he was coming up. I loved watching like Bradley Martin. Like way back, way back. And then that's kind of what inspired me to like, oh, I want to be, I want to be this like YouTuber, you know, it all started on YouTube, you know, and then Instagram, uh, I started posting there and then the rest is history. Then and I came to this point. You know? The rest is history. And I mean, you are where you are now, a sponsored athlete by Jim yeah. Shark. And I mean, shoot, hey, if you, I guess if you work your ass off, things do really go your way. And I mean, yeah. I saw you had a, a, a TikTok or even an Instagram video of, you know, that little skit with your, you as the father, was that realistic? Did you and your father actually go to the gym like that? And was he like, actually, or was that? That was definitely dramatized. Um, me and my dad actually never really went to the gyms together, like outside of our house. We lifted together all the time. Like we'd, cause we had a garage we had a squat rack. We had a bench press. We did deadlifts. Um, I did most of the power lifts. He mostly just stuck to He's a lot. He's a lot older than I am, obviously, my dad. So he didn't do like the deadlifting and squatting as serious as I did. But like we always lifted together. Uh, he'd always be like he was like my my first original spotter, you know, for like my PRs on bench press. So you never. But like no, um, I based some of my some of the voice from my dad certain things like that last clip in that video where he was like where I picked up the protein is oh get the big one. That's just something my dad would have said if I was like a 16 year old at a supplement shop. He'd, you know what I mean? Like, yo, get the big one, get the big one, type of deal. But like certain things, like the gloves and the and the um, the belt, like that. My dad never did any of that. But there was just like there's certain things I used for my dad that I learned, but other things that are seen, like that are like basically memes on the online of like dad lifters or typical like whatever. So just like I was from everywhere. I was more kidding. I didn't realize that you were actually basing a little off that of your, of your dad. I, I love it. And then obviously, you yeah. know, you know, you talk about how you go from South Carolina back to New Jersey and now you are a fitness influencer. And I, I, I truly have never understood what, you know, the definition of a fitness influencer is to me. I can't wrap my head around it. So Luke, for you, what is your definition of, of your job, sir? Honestly, I really wouldn't be able to pinpoint that for you either. It's just a very, it's a very like confusing, like um, title. You know what I mean? Like fitness influencer. Like I don't know. At this point, it seems as it seems like I'm putting out more 
I'd be more of an entertainer than anything, right? Like more of the stuff that I put out is for like laughs and um real like stuff that are just relatable, stuff that people get like in the gym, like that you see every day. And it's like, oh, I'm just gonna bring that to life and then, you know, hopefully make a few people like hopefully make some people laugh type of deal. Um, I kind of like faded away from a lot of the all right, I'm gonna post a a picture of me shirtless with my abs out and write this like, you know, two, three paragraph of being motivational or getting in depth about my lifts and this and that, or posting like swipes of my lifts. And I still do that. I'll do that here and there. Um, but not frequently, you know, it's very saturated. Plenty of people already have that on the internet. So it's like, you know, I could jump into that and, you know, add to that mass group of fitness influencers, or I could do this comedy thing where it's kind of just like, I get to be as, as as original as Luke Ellsman can be, you know what I mean? And for that, it brought a lot more life into posting than kind of just being what everyone else is already doing, like doing what everyone else has already been doing. Comedy, you could be very original, you know? And, and I think that's the one big thing, obviously, you know, this podcast started as a fitness podcast and we, we had, you know, a lot of young aspiring, I guess, fitness influencers who, Again, those shirtless pictures, and they go, "How can we come on the podcast?" My simple words to them were, "Be different, be unique." I mean, I see shirtless pictures all the time on my feed, but what I stop is when there's a a, a unique or, for your case, what stopped me was the comedy in it. I think, right. and at the end of the day, it, it almost seems like it gets tiring of posting those same shirtless pictures. It seems like it's like a repetitive thing. Now, doing your comedy, Luke, you can be yourself, you can have fun. You can get a bigger audience than just that fitness, you know, kind of saturation market. And Absolutely. I think that really is uh, really key. And obviously you built a damn big TikTok, you know, so how long did it kind of take you to build that TikTok up? And then, you know, what's the process of that been like? Okay. So I remember when TikTok first came out, right. And to everyone and myself, I was like, oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to download that app i'm not gonna watch it because i thought it was just dance stuff you know people dancing to like trendy music and that's all it was right and i was like oh i'm too you know i can't hop on that like that's not like and even my little brother was like dude just do it because like there's so many people watching just post your fitness stuff i'm like no like it's for people that dance and stuff i'll leave it to them like it's it's stupid that that kind of mindset you know i was stupid in the long run because if i hopped on it earlier maybe where i'd be now would be even bigger but like, you know, your stubbornness in your head kind of like stopped that for a while. So eventually I posted my first TikTok with my brother. And that's when I still lived in South Carolina. And I think that was like 2020, maybe, maybe 2019. Um, and it was like a stupid, um, there was a trend going around with guys trying to break their, um, break an egg with the bicep. Yeah. And I did that. I didn't even, I couldn't even, um. I couldn't even break the egg. Long story. <laughs> like, I couldn't do it. It was just a funny, stupid video uh, that my brother filmed. And I was like, all right, we'll throw it up. It got like 100,000 views. And I was like, whoa. You know what I mean? Because we're like, the way I laughed in the video, people people liked the way I was like giggling in the video. And people picked up on that. And they thought it was just stupid. And I was like, whoa, this is cool. I got 100,000 views for like a 20 second clip. And that's where it kind of started like the snowball. Not, not like, up until this point but like that's where i was like all right well i'm gonna start posting on this thing and i had a lot of like there was a lot of phases where i stopped posting for a few months and i was like i lose like maybe my i kind of like it kind of be like um what do you call it? like uh like a creative block you know and I'd, I'd go on like this long like i'd go on for like months of just like Oh, we have to film this. Oh, this is funny. Oh, this is funny. And then for a while, and then I'd hit a, I'd hit a point where like a plateau or like a, um, whatever. And I wouldn't think anything's funny. I was just like, Oh, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't want to post. I don't, you know, cause I didn't want to suck, you know, that type of deal always held myself to like cer cer some certain standard. But I, I guess to answer your question back in like 2019, 2020 is when I got into it, but I had so many phases where I was like on and off with it. It hasn't, it, it's until now where I've kind of been going strong. But. And would you say that is one of the big reasons that now you are a sponsored athlete and that really kind of helped you get your name out there? Yes, absolutely. Um, Apollon, I was with before um, oh, wow. TikTok. I was with Apollon before there were 
when they were still a smaller company, they weren't as well as well known as they are at this point. I was with them since 2017, like right when I moved to South Carolina. And then I was back and forth to South Carolina and New Jersey because I would visit my friends, visit some of my family. Um, yeah, and then that was the only gym I'd go to because I didn't have my garage gym anymore. I didn't want to go back to retro because that's what I was doing in high school because I was really into my, my powerlifting. I never took it really serious, but I was – Serious enough to the point where I was like, okay, I want to find a gym that has a, a power, like a, a deadlifting bar. Cause I was really into my deadlifts and I didn't want to deadlift with some like crappy little, you know, um, you know, like the commercial gym bars that would probably bend after like five plates. So I was like, I want a deadlift bar. I want a little bit of, um, you know, I want to, I want to have like the Texas deadlift bar. I want to, I want to take this serious. I want to go to a real gym. I don't want to whatever. And that's where it all started. Then I was filming my YouTube videos there when I was visiting. And then that's when, Rob, the owner, started picking up on that. And then he saw that, you know, I was I had a little bit of an audience and that I was posting all the time. And then we kind of got we had there was like there was like a middleman, but like at some point we got into talking and then that's when I started working for working with Apollon. It was very like a slow, it was like a slow um build up, but yeah, it all came all came around. But that was before, that was before TikTok. I was just posting YouTube then basic YouTube videos, like vlogs, like stupid stuff with my friends and like working out. Like maybe I'd put some music over it or, or maybe I'd keep it like the raw clips and whatever, like the BSing in and out of sets and what, just having fun. But I used to post a lot on YouTube and not a lot of people probably know about that, but I have like hundreds of videos of just like meaningless lifting, just fun vlogs. Are, are they still up there, Luke? They're all still up there. I mean, I, if you scroll far enough back, you'll see Luke with like, you know, that like the typical like teenage Luke look, like early 20s, you know, like not really, not really all there, but just living, you know, type of deal. Um, but it's cool. It's cool to be able to go back and check all that out. But yeah, it's up there. It cringes me out. I don't like to rock, watch my old videos. It, it's cringy, but. I, I don't watch any of my podcasts either, Luke. I, I'm like, damn, I don't even <laughs> want to look at myself and how stupid I'm talking to these stars. But, you know, obviously in the fitness and the supplement side, Apollo Nutrition has, uh, you know, taken off, has really made a name for itself. Obviously, we did have, you know, the owner, and then obviously we had the Texas Titan on the podcast. And I, obviously, I love Branch Warren. And, and, you know, any brand that now has Branch Warren is, 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 a, is a big company. So to right. you, why has Pollen kind of, you know, the supplement, not the gym, but why has Pollen Supplements kind of taken off? And why has it built such a big, I guess, audience now? They're different. They're like, I, I, I think they're a lot different than most supplement companies. They've always bumped, they're always coming out with new versions, upgraded versions to their prior uh, supplement. So same supplement, but just upgraded. They're always doing that. So like continuously throughout the years, like they're just always coming out, um, upgrading the, the supplement, coming up with new flavors, making a flavor better and just new supplements as a whole, you know, different types of fat burners. Like just like some, I can't even keep up, man. I'm going to be honest. Like there's so many things coming out. They just came, they just released their new uh, sleep formula. They have two or three, they have three different total pump products. They're just always coming out with new stuff and it's exciting. And I think that's part of the huge reason why they're the, the growth of the company has been so successful. It's exciting. You know, they're always trying to do better and not just pick a supplement and look, all right, let's make this supplement, just this supplement better. But like they're doing it to everything. And they have, they're, you know, they're, they have so many different supplements at this point too. But back when I started, it was really just protein pre-workout. Didn't even have a pump pre-workout yet. Uh, they're branching amino acids, their intro workout. Um, just like a handful, you know, enough to where I can count. Now I can't even keep up. So I think that's got to be, you know, a huge part of the reason. I can't see why that wouldn't be, you know. So yeah, and I mean, it it is truly a great brand. We we rock the, you know, the I like the Kiev cake. I, I had to try it. I, uh, I yeah. felt like, you know, speaking of supplements, to me something that was also interesting about you is, you know, you have your own pre workout. And before we even get into this, you know, first person mm -hmm. to uh, buy, you know. The Young Blood pre workout, send me a screenshot. We will personally send you another Apollo Nutrition product. Um, but now, speaking of that, I kind of gave that into it. You have your own pre workout. And how did that come to be? And what was the process process of that like, Luke? 
if you really want, like, it's very, very like, okay, I'll, I'll just tell it to you. <clears throat> okay, so this came about randomly. Didn't see it coming, had no intention of it. This is, was never a part of the plan this year. Um, it just happened. It happened like this. I was posting my TikToks. My TikToks were doing very good, right? Um, so my girlfriend had mine. She goes, why don't you do some, why don't you do a video with Rob? And see if you get this amount of likes and you make a, make a TikTok that if you get this amount of likes on a video that you guys could do a pre-workout collab. And, I'll, and, and I, was, I was stubborn to the idea. I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to put him on the spot. Me and Rob are really cool. So I don't want to make him feel uncomfortable. You know what I mean? But she was like persistent on it, persistent on it. Uh, she's like, no, it should be fun. Even if it doesn't happen, like just say like you're going to get 500,000 likes, which would never happen. Like I can't make a video. And... I don't have that. I didn't, especially then I didn't have that kind of power where I could be like, talk to the camera, give me 5,000 likes and I can get this pre-work. It would never happen. So I was like, this is stupid. Blah. I, I don't know. I'm, I can be very stubborn to certain things. I'm just like, oh, you know, whatever. But eventually I think she annoyed me enough to the point where I was like, all right, let me go ask him. I was like, you want to do this video? Blah, blah. He's like, I'm in. He goes, I'm in. I was like, oh, I was like, what do you mean? He's like, we'll start looking at pre-workouts like right now or something like that. Like, Along those lines where he was sort of like, it was always in the back of his head. Maybe he already had that idea, not the video, but just the collab. And I was like, mm, all right. We didn't even end up making the video um, for the pre, like the challenge until like the very end. And at that point it wasn't really relevant. It was like, he wanted to do this anyway. And, you know, of course I was all in. I love the pre, I love his pre-workouts already. I took Hooligan for the past like four years in a row, like never switched off. Like I'll switch off with like random pre's here and there, but like always have Hooligan. Like he was always on deck. Like I've always took all their products throughout the last however many years I was with them. So with that and the fact that I was growing and the loyalty that I had to the brand, it was like, it was um for him, I guess it seemed like, no question that like he was interested. This is something he was, I guess, already conscious about. Like, I don't know. And so when I brought him, brought to him the idea, he was like, oh, let's do it. And the rest, like, again, the rest is history. He was starting to look into flavors. We knew exactly what we wanted to do. We wanted to make the flavor taste really good. We want to make sure I had a good pump, not as much energy, but like a lot still. Um, pump, focus. And we wanted to make sure it tasted, tasted as good as we could make it. So, but yeah, that's literally how it happened. And that is, I think, I don't know the exact dates, like the day I brought that to his attention, but we're talking like six months, six months in the making, you know, it was, it was pretty quick though, considering, yeah. considering yeah. how it was brought to him, you know? Yeah. And I mean, shout out to your girlfriend for, for that, obviously. That's right. Exactly. Wow. No, shout out, wow. shout out to the girl. I would have well, never, I would have never done that again. Like I'm very like, nah, I don't want to bother him. You know, I don't want to put him on the spot. Like, yeah, it seems like a lot. And then, nope, little did I know that would have came about. I mean, sometimes in life you got to take the bull by its horn as, as I think they say, I don't know. I don't know even what that means. Taking the bull by its horn. I've heard it, but you got to take the bull by its horn. I you know, agree. obviously, you know, looking at fitness influencers more as you have, I'm going to say you are a fitness influencer. E e even, you know, you are a little different, which is, which is really amazing. Now, is there money in, in being a fitness, fitness influencer? Or is this something that you kind of got to grow your audience to really get the maximum value of uh, monetary growth in that, in that aspect? So like you're talking about money now, right? So you want I'm just to talk about, yeah, not, not your specific, but like right, as right, from right. What you've seen and from your TikTok ad revenue, is being a fitness influencer, you know, I guess, can is is that a good salary? I understand what you're saying. No, I, I understand exactly what you're saying. So it, it can and it can't be. You know, it all depends on, like, it's not about how many followers you really have. It's about the followers that you have. You know what yeah. I mean? It's not about how many. It's about who. It's about that. It's about the community that you build and the support that that brings and how many people really, like, back up who that is whatever, you know, whatever it is. I mean, you can have millions of followers on TikTok and that just doesn't translate. You know, they just watch for maybe, maybe if you don't really show a lot of your personality, say, right. And you're just like, 
have a crazy freaking physique or something. You got you built a following off of that or, you know, I don't know. Maybe you just put on a lot like more just meaningless content, but it's very attractive. Let's just put it that way. And that audience really doesn't translate over to like people using maybe your, your link to support for like my, for in my case, Gymshark or, you know, your pre-workout supplement. No one's buying it because maybe they just don't. And so it doesn't, it's not really about how many it's about um, who's following you and what you actually built with that following for one. And, you know, I think with fitness influencers and revenue, it all become, it all comes down to like how many different streams of income, you know, I don't think one's going to be enough. It could be, but for people at my stage, no way. You know, you're going to need it from TikTok. You're going to need it from Reels. You're going to need it from YouTube. You're going to need it from Commission. You're going to need it from, you know, that, this, that, you know, everything, you know? And then when it all comes together, that's like, oh, you can make something. Um, but it ain't easy. I'll tell you that. It's not like I'm some, I'm not, I don't got my Lamborghini outside. I'll tell you that. You know what I mean? Like it is, it is not you can't be in this for the money. Otherwise you'll be out. You know what I mean? Because you'll, 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 it's not what maybe the internet makes it seem, you know what I mean? When you're this like influencer of any sort. Right. So you can't be, you can't go into this thinking like, Oh, I want to be like, uh, you know, I, I want to say C-Bum, but he's an exceptional. He's a, he's yeah. like the top, he's the top of the mountain. But like some, yeah. some, some, some influencer you just saw buy like a Tesla, right? And you're like, dang, like I want to start posting videos so I can make money to buy a Tesla. Like, no, like slow down. Like there's exceptions. There's some people that really do blow up and in a short, short time. And like very exceptional, very small probability that's, that's ever going to happen to you. I'm sorry. It didn't happen to me. Like I said, I've been posting YouTube videos since 2017. Where I'm at now is nowhere where I want to be. And I'm telling you, there ain't no there ain't no leftover change from last month where I'm just going to be like, go buy, you know, a Tesla for shits and gigs. You know what I mean? Like whatever the car may be. So it's and tough. It's it, tough. It, it, it is tough. And, and, you know, I didn't even realize that. Well, obviously, when, when you know, I understand the fitness influencer thing. But it, even in the podcast, you know, everyone's like, how much money have you made? How much, you know, you get, you're getting all these good guests, you know, I haven't made a single cent and, and I probably won't for a few more years. You know, that's the name of the right. game. As you mentioned, Luke, I think that is key. We do this because we, we love it. You know, I have a, I have a nine to five at home manager at GNC on the side. I call this my full-time job, even though I don't get any money. It's just the hours and, you know, the process. Yeah. And, but, but I think it is, it is, it's about how bad you got to trust the process at the end of the day. I don't care if you, you're just starting out now. Be different, be unique, and and I mean, obviously, from 2017 to even now, you got to pat yourself on the back, Luke, because I'm Thank sure you. there's been Thank some you. good. Things. I'm kidding. There's been a lot of good things. I mean, I even just saw you with with Ronnie Coleman, you know, a, a few uh, weeks ago, and I, I do actually have to ask: Is Ronnie that big in person still? Like, what do you mean as in that big? Like, what are you referring like, to? That muscular is what I'm talking about. Like, like from still the picture, he, yes, he got muscle. Like he's definitely still stocky. He isn't like completely flattened out. Like he's, he still lifts. He didn't lift when I saw him. He wasn't lifting when I saw him. Like he didn't lift at the gym, but like, yeah, hundred percent still like considering everything still got some mass on him, you know? And I don't think he'll, I think he'll fight for that mass till the day he dies one day. You know what I mean? Like that's just him, you know, same thing with Arnold. You ever seen him on a podcast? He still lifts and he's, He's getting up there in age, and it's like it's just ingrained in them. Yeah. So, so no, but yeah, Ronnie's still looking good considering all the unfortunate circumstances with his legs and whatnot. But like, dude, he's a he's really awesome, you know. And he, I will say, um, at that event, he took pictures with every single one, every single person there. He, he wasn't grumpy. He he was standing up for the pictures, and no one was asking him to pose or anything for that, like for that matter. He would get up for every single picture. He always had a great attitude, even towards the final moments he was at the event. He was just a good guy. He didn't give anyone attitude, didn't seem grumpy. And he honestly had plenty of reasons to be grumpy. You know, if anybody can be a little grumpy, it's him at his age, considering like he's probably in yeah, but pain. Like, I would, I would say it's definitely, like, def- justifiable. Like, I would be, I would understand. And he was just, he was headstrong, good, great guy, honestly. Very happy to have been able to meet someone 
And the one thing I've been able and love about the bodybuilding and fitness world, I mean, these guys are just phenomenal, whether it be the, you know, the young fitness influencers or, or the bodybuilders. I mean, it's just a great community. It's a tight knit community. Obviously yeah. I've been lucky to speak with them and, and get to know them off air. And, you know, these guys, even Branch Warren, who you would think is just a mean motherfucker. I mean, on the podcast, polite, respectful, you know, just a great hard working motherfucker. And I mean, that is, you know Branch Warren as well. He's an apologist. Yeah. Christian athlete. And dude is, I mean, these guys are great. They're humble, which is what 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 I love to see about the sport. Now, you know, I want to end this loop. You've kind of seen it all in the fitness industry. And, and going back to 2017, right, so where right. do you see, I guess, the fitness industry heading and 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 the role and of a fitness influencer in the fitness industry? So where do I see it going? So where yeah. do I see it going? Huh? Interesting. So you mean like how it's been evolving from like yeah. what, what I said about the swipes, uh, posting on YouTube, like the typical fitness blogs to like the comedy, like the evolution of fitness so guess, on social media? So I guess, yeah. So we, we started seeing kind of David Lee doing and Bradley Martin doing the YouTubes. Now right. we're seeing it take over TikTok. And now we're kind of seeing, you know, really anyone with a supplement code, whether your following is 20 followers or 20,000 followers. So in the future... Where do you see just the fitness industry heading with the fitness influencers, whether that be more on TikTok, whether that be YouTube? Where do you see that going? I know that's a loaded question. I, I it, very is, it is. Um, I don't want to answer this. Maybe I guess there's no wrong way to answer this because no one really would know until you're there, which is impossible. But what I can predict is that, for one, it seems as if TikTok is making fitness and working out or maybe just a scene very trendy. Right. You see a lot, a lot of people, um, a lot of people getting into it. A lot of people love to bring their cameras and tripods to the gym and film TikTok um, style videos in the gym because it's become cool. You know what I mean? It's become cool, especially to the younger, um, the younger kids that are just coming like 16, 17, 18, 19, female and male, you know, both of them. Like you see. So for me, I think it's going to be it's just going to continue to get bigger. You know what I mean? Um, I hope in the most, you know, the best, the best way possible. Right. Um, but what it's going to look like in a few years down the line, you know, it's hard to say, you know, I really, yeah, for me, it's hard to say where it's going to be with like content and stuff, but like, I think YouTube's always going to be around. I, I think that, um, the real TikTok and YouTube shorts is really going to take over. So I, I do believe that. And I've heard other creators outside of fitness say the same thing about <clears throat> how shorts are going to become a huge thing. And I think that's just going to be the same thing for fitness, though. So whether that be like fitness motivation, uh, like cool edits, people talking about, you know, their knowledges and experience and just trying to educate um, and there's guys like me with comedy, just going to laugh and post a relatable gym, this gym, that with characters and jokes and whatnot. People are going to love that. And then, you know, whatever else kind of content that people come up with, you know, but, but that is, I think that's the direction it's going to continue to go in, uh, with the reels and the, the TikToks and, uh, just the short, short videos essentially. Right. Um, but yeah, I just, I just see it getting. I just see more companies coming about. I think um, the big companies uh, will probably stay sort of up there, you know, and there'll be brand new companies coming all left and right because I think it's just becoming more trendy now. You know, TikTok has really made it more trendy for the good and bad. You know, it's good for the businesses, but, you know, there's certain it, it definitely upsets people certain in certain circumstances and situations. And I understand both ways. You know, I just hope to see. As long as it's positive, cool, and everyone's getting along and the community's healthy, I think that it can all be good, though. You know, and that I mean, I, question? I don't know if I just rambled off. Like, yeah, you know, it, it did answer my question, and, and that made me think too. I do see the fitness industry going in two ways, actually. Obviously, I have fitness influencers, and then I have bodybuilders in kind of separate right. roles going forward. Obviously, I do see the fitness influencers kind of being more of that that tripod, and you know, nothing good or bad about that. If it's how they do those videos and that's going to determine it. But you obviously we see now alpha lead gym. It's just like 
it's a you know tripod stand, tripod stand, yeah. tripod stand. And I think that's the way fitness is going for the younger you know generation. I think also speaking of bodybuilding, I think bodybuilding is making its just grand return. Obviously, now we're getting faces that kind of the average person is knowing whether they don't know bodybuilding or fitness in general. You you know you know the blessings Aladiba who's been on the show, great guy. You know kind of more of the the C bombs, the Jay Cutler. Yeah. You know, and obviously this year's Mr. O is just going to be, I think it's going to start getting people more interested in the sport. Uh, and I think it is a fast growing sport to a point which will eventually lead to more people in bodybuilding, which will lead to more people kind of looking at the fitness creators such as you, Luke, such as all the other guys out there. So I think it is it is going to go in a, in a good way. Obviously, there'll be, you know, there's always bads and everything, but I think yeah, the, the TikTok industry is people are now being able to make a living off of it. So that is saying something. I mean, yeah. in 2005, 2010, it was kind of unheard of until Bradley really started doing the first fitness YouTube. We started making the money, and then it's kind of anything's possible going forward. Now, for right. you, Luke, I want to end this. What is your biggest tip for someone who is looking to become a fitness influencer? My biggest tip is to, I mean, I want it's pretty cheesy. Uh, I'll say a few things, but for one, it's just never give up because if you never give up, you can't really lose, right? That's kind of one of the quotes that kind of got me through all the way up to this point. It's like, if you don't, if you don't quit, you can't really lose, right? You just keep going, you know, you don't stop. And at some point what you will see what you, what you've been working for, you know what I mean? Uh, for one. So if you really believe in yourself and you believe what you're doing is something that you genuinely and truthfully enjoy, then there's no reason for it to ever, you know, be a burden. Like you should never feel like, exhausted from it and you should just continue to keep going and just keep going and just whatever that is you know um but and like stay consistent like I, that's exactly what i just said but like be who you are to the best you can be because you are different you know what i mean but as soon as you start to try to like um replicate and mirror what other people are doing to get because you see them success like um you see the success from them it's not going to trans it's not going to always being your best, you know, interest to do so because that's them. They already did it, you know, and people are going to realize people, people pick up on that. So when you're original and you're being who you are, um, people's never, people have never seen that before because you are, you know, you are who you are and nobody else is you, you know what I mean? So be you to the best you can be. And that goes as far as like, for me, like, like for me, it was like letting out that, you know, comedy goofy side that I never really showed before. So I think that's also part of the reason why uh, TikTok has been, you know, going the way it's going. Same thing with reels. People think it's funny. It's because I'm like, honestly, just being my, I'm at my dumb ass self, honestly. And I think those two, those two alone, uh, I think are always going to be my biggest tips. Um, but you probably heard that before, but that's exactly, that's just reasonings of why I believe those are the best two things. Uh, it's not about the fancy equipment. I film all my TikToks off my phone. Uh, you know, it's not about that. I don't think it's about wearing um, the coolest trendy clothes. You know, some people, I, I know um, a lot of people at the gym think it's like, you know, a fashion show. Let me get the coolest gym stuff. Like, you know, maybe I'll pop more. Like, yeah, it might help. might help, you know. But, like, it's really just be about you, you know, and just don't stop being you. So those yep. two, those two are unbeatable. You know, you could do anything. I, I love it. And, and, you know, this is the first time ever on my podcast that I've said it, be, be better than me because, you know, I was doing those shirtless photos and I was trying to be that. that I did the same thing. It, it became, it, it, it came, you know, old to me. It, it wasn't, you know, who I truly was. And obviously the podcast has, you know, made storms because simply being unique, be, be, no one's going to be a Luke Elsman. No one's going to be an underdog talk. No one's going to be right. a, a Ronnie Coleman, be yourself, you know, create oh. opportunities for yourself, get outside the box. And that's what I tell these young influencers who ask me for advice, because granted, I just say, be yourself. That's how you're going to catch my attention. You're going to catch these supplement Absolutely. companies. And, you know, here's a big shout out to, uh, uh, Lex Tarazov, a young LA athlete. He has only 8,000 followers. But the dude makes waves. The dude right. brings in so much money for the company, so humble, so genuine, works a nine to five job, open about it. He's just himself and he makes right. waves with one of the fastest growing companies, showing that followers don't matter, showing that you can truly be yourself. And if that's that sponsorship 
or that affiliate you want, you can get it. And I mean, it, 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 it work your butt off, work your ass off, Luke. It has been an honor, a privilege. Now, before we go, Absolutely. is there anything you want to plug? Where can we find, you know, your code? Where can we find your content? You know, what are those codes that we can use? I don't know if I mentioned that. And right. uh, the floor is yours, sir. Uh, all right. So you can find me on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, all Luke Elsbin. It's Luke underscore Elsbin on Instagram, but I don't really think that'd make a huge amount of difference. Uh, code Luke 15 for any Apollo Nutrition supplements. All right. Uh, that includes Young Blood, of course. That's still out. So if you guys haven't tried Young Blood yet, that's the collab with me and Apollo Nutrition. It's, it's an amazing pre workout. I'm actually been sipping on it this entire time because I'm going to be headed to the gym. And it just helps like focus, you know, bring up the mood, get the energy flowing. Uh, it's good for talk. Uh, it's good for me when I'm like right before going to the gym uh, and I like doing one of these podcasts. It gets like the, the brain juices flowing. Um, my link for Gymshark, Black Friday still live. I don't know when this video is going up, where this podcast is going up, but Gymshark, uh, that link, it's just a, you know, a shop link that is in my description for YouTube, my bio for Instagram. So it's just a link. So there's no code for that. But other than that, I think that's all I got to really plug and to really talk about. But I, I Teddy, thank you so much for having me on the, the pod, man. It's just super cool. You know, I was really relaxed. You're a really cool guy. It was nice to get to talk to you, meet you. Uh, even though it's just like a Zoom call type of deal, but it's an honor, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. And, and hey, if it weren't a Zoom call or if it weren't what we're doing now, you know, I, I hate to say I would never be able to get these guests. I would never. I mean, I don't have the money to fly a Ryan Lochte in or I don't even have the money to fly a Luke Elsman in. I, 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 I you know, but no, you are a class act. I love how you are taking, you know, a different approach to the fitness industry. And, and you know, my podcast normally I don't do fitness influencers anymore because. To me, they're the same old thing, and I might get a little hate on that. But you right. truly are different, and, and I love it. I think it's what we need. You know, again, first person to buy a Young Blood pre-workout. I will send you any Apollon supplement that you choose. Please make it happen. Send me a screenshot. Right. I mean, guys, hey. don't forget to set or check out loose content as well because you know I've been loving it. I think it's hilarious, and you know I will always be a supporter and fan of that, guys. Until next time, underdog out.